Coach Ma'am A. Magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. Um, today, uh, we're going to discuss English for Week 3. Noting Significant Details. Um, hi, Alex. How are you? Hello. How's your day? Um, it's okay. How was your sleep? It's You're okay. okay. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so our topic for today is about noting significant details. Okay, so what's this lesson all about? Okay, so this lesson highlights the identification of significant details in a text. So, so in a specific text, there are significant details. Ano ba itong ibig sabihin nito? Merong mga importanteng bagay sa mga importanteng information or inform importanteng mga details na nakalagay sa isang text or sa isang story, sa isang article. Okay? At, um, posibleng ito ay, uh, this involves the process of noting essential information that the text provide. Okay, so... Itong proce process na to, itong noting significant details, um, it involves the process ng pag-note o pagsusulat ng mga essential information. This process allows you to note, notice the events, characters, and other information highlighted by authors or writers. They are expected to demonstrate understanding of the text elements to comprehend various text types and know significant details portrayed in the selections or passages. So, meron ditong tinatawag na uh, specific selection. So, babasahin natin ito. Um, so, for the interest of time, si Coach Mom A ang magbabasa for Alex. So, Alex, so please uh, listen. Okay? So, i-explain ko lang muna tong, tong sinasabi ditong process. Okay. Bakit daw kinakailangan na i-take note yung mga important events or yung mga tinatawag na uh, essentials. So, characters. Yung characters, yung mga, mga gumaganap. Halimbawa sa isang kwento. At yung mga information na ito. Bakit daw to kailangan i-take note? Um, at nakikita natin na talagang hina-highlight ng authors or ng writers itong mga events na to, itong important events na to or significant details na to. Kasi, <clears throat> dito natin mas naiintindihan yung nilalaman noong binabasa natin. Yung pag nakuha natin yung mga highlight. Kasi, kasi hindi mo naman babasahin ulit ng isang buo yung isang article or isang babasahin Para maintindihin mo lang ulit kung halimbawa may mga questions asked regarding that, um, hindi mo na siya kailangan basahin ulit. Halimbawa, umubos ka na isang oras sa pagbabasa sa kanya, babasahin mo na naman siya ng another one hour para, para masagot mo lamang yung mga tanong dito. So, kaya importante na i-take note natin yung mga significant details na yan. Okay? So, you listen Alex ha, as I read this. Uh, selection. No, I, I want you to sit up straight kasi wala kang matututunan if you're leaning or para kang natutulog. Lalo pa sa oras na to. Okay? So, Achoo by Cynthia Sherwood. We all sneeze sometimes. Sneezing is a reflex that your body does automatically. That means you cannot make yourself sneeze or stop one once it has started. When you sneeze, your body is trying to get rid of bad things in your nose, such as bacteria. You have extra germs when you have a cold, so you sneeze a lot more. You might also sneeze when you smell pepper. Inside your nose, there are hundreds of tiny hairs. These hairs filter the air you breathe. Sometimes, dust and pollen find their way through these hairs and bother your nasal passages. The nerves in the lining of your nose tell your brain that something is invading your body. Your brain 
lungs, nose, mouth, and the muscles of your upper body work together to blow away the invaders with a sneeze. When you sneeze, germs from your nose get blown into the air. Using a tissue or sneezing in your, into your sleeve captures most of the, these germs. It is very important to wash your hands after you sneeze into them, especially during cold and flu season. Do you ever sneeze when you walk into bright sunlight? About 25% of people experience this phenomenon. Scientists believe that the brain gets confused when signals from the optic nerve triggers the sneezing reflex in direct sunlight. This usually runs in families. If someone nearby sneezes, remember to tell them, What's that? Gesundheit. This is a funny looking word which pronounced Gesundheit. Gesundheit. Yeah. It is a German word that wishes someone good health after sneezing. Okay. So. Um, sasagutin natin yung mga tanong sa learning task with uh, your understanding on this. So, habang nagbabasa ako kanina, I was hoping na magsusulat ka. But then, I think this is still, um, this lesson is still very young. Uh, or, bago pa lang. Kaya, hindi mo pa alam yung gagawin mo. Okay? Okay, so, pero sa pagpapatuloy natin sa lesson na to, um, later on, I want you to learn how to take note of important details while we are reading, okay? So, answer, so for learning task 1, uh, note details by answering the questions below while you write your answers in your notebook. First, which parts of your body work together when you sneeze? So, number 1. Ano-ano daw na part ng body mo ang uh, gumagalaw or affected kapag ikaw ay bumabahin? Wala sa mukha ko ang sagot, anak. Nasa dito. Okay? So, you, you look at this. So, which parts of your body work together? ano na daw? Sige, ha? Ah... Uh, So, ano yung una mong nakita? Na part of your body? Nose. No, nose? Sige, sige. Yun yung nose yung nandun eh. Sige, you write down nose. Ano pa? Mouth? In, you read na. Kasi it's written na there eh. It's written there. Brain. So, you nose, brain. Okay. What else? What else? Lungs. May S. What else? O, oh, meron ng nose eh. Mouth. And? Muscles of your upper body. Mahaba siya. Muscles of your upper body. So, this work together. This part of your parts of your body work together kapag tayo ay bumabahin. Bumabahin. <clears throat> okay, number two. Number two. What does the German word Gesundheit mean? Ano raw? Nando sa dulo. I wish you good health. I wish you good health. Okay. Good help. Letter A. Ang haba naman ng spacing mo, be. Sayang naman ang papel natin. Sige. Next, number three. Why do some people sneeze when they walk into bright sunlight? Meron dyan. Nakita ko yun. They walk into bright sunlight. Why? The brain gets confused when signal from the optic nerves trigger the sneeze reflex in the 
direct sunlight. Ah, naintindihan mo ba yun? Ano daw? Bak daw? Nalilito daw ang alin? Brain. Kapag? Reflex in the direct sunlight. So, yung ibig lang sabihin nito, pag nag lumabas siya doon sa may maliwanag, nalilito yung brain, um, doon sa signal, kasi yung optic nerve, yun yung nerve na nagko-connect sa eyes, papunta sa brain. So, nalilito yung brain, pag masyadong biglang di direct sunlight, nakita niya na silaw yung mata sa direct sunlight. So, ang tendency, uh, napapabahing siya. Ganun yun. Okay? Sige, you write it down. Write down the answer. The brain. Uh oh, gets confused when signals from the optic nerve trigger the sneezing reflex and direct sunlight. Confused. I think you need to leave that and then balikan mo na lang you put number 4 here dito dito yeah. sige sige kasi mag iintay tayo ng matagal pero you, I want you to complete that later okay I will check that okay learning task 2 may 4 ay wala na palang 4 so learning task 2 na pala tayo have you seen an owl? Read the selection and find out details about this wonderful creature. Then, choose the letters of the correct answers. Write your answers in your notebook. Okay, magbabasa ulit ako ha. My name is Jerry. I am an owl. Have you heard an owl hoot before? I have a big face and large eyes. I have strong legs and sharp claws called talons. I have big wings and soft feathers. I sleep during the day and hunt for food at night. I like to catch rats. I can see and hear things that are very far away. I have very special feathers that allow me to fly without making a sound. Did you know that a baby owl is called an owlet? My home is in a nest in a tree. How about you? Where do you live? Okay. Who is Jerry? In a, an owl. Okay. Mommy, I'm a picture Robin. 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 Um, it's a bird. Um, it has parang different colors. Let's check later sa internet, ha? It has several colors, tapos, mara siyang nakita mo yung maya. Pero malaki siya kesa sa maya, eh. Sige, let's see later yung Robin. But, uh, ano daw si Jerry? Owl. An owl. Okay, what are his claws called? Ano daw tawag sa mga claws niya? Talons. Talons. Okay. Let's see. C. Talons. Ayun, talons. C. Number three. What does Jerry like to catch? Hams and sandwiches, fish and chips, pizza, pizza. <laughs> uh, or rats? Rats. Okay. I love pizza. Number four. But can you write four, five, and six there up opposite? Wait. Mm. Eraser na naman. Wag na, wag ka na mag erase Wag ka na mag-erase. It takes a lot of our time. Lagyan mo na lang doon. Ganun din yun. Oh, and don't get used in, in using eraser lots of time. Almost every time talaga eh. Number four. What is a baby owl called? A hen. An owl. Okay. What does Jerry do during daytime? Sleeping. Sleeping. Okay. Why are Jerry's feathers special? They can they don't make sounds. Tama ba? They don't make sound. Yeah, we because they allow me to fly without making a sound. Very good. 
Okay. Learning task 3. We have another paragraph to answer. Okay? Learning task 3. Okay. My name, I, sorry. This is Jessa. Ito raw, sino daw ta? Jessa. This is Jessa. She, she will say, share with you why she is proud of her family. Are you proud of your family? Yes. Read the lesson below and answer the questions on the next page. Write your answers in your notebook. Hi, my name is Jessa. I am 10 years old and I live in a small house in Santo Angel. I have a wonderful family whom I love very much. There are six members of my family. My grandparents, my parents, I, and my brother. My grandfather is a very wise man who gives us great advice in every situation. My grandmother is a talented cook and a ki and kind woman. My father is a farmer who has fed a lot of people in our barangay. My mother is a vegetable seller. She is always there for us, and I am very and I am great grateful to to her for this. My brother Tristan is six years old, and we get along very well. This is my family, and I am proud of them. Okay. Ha. How old is Jessa? Okay, first question. How old is Jessa? Sige. Ten years old. Ten years old. Very good. I think I'll show entire. Jessa is ten years old. Okay, number two. How many members are there in her family? Six. Very good. And let me clear this. Okay. Number three. Where does Jessa live? In a small house. Oh no, it's it's Santa Angel. Okay, Santo Angel. The small house in Santo Angel, but sure, the Santo Angel. Next. What job does Jess's father have? Jess's father. Farmer. Farmer. Okay. Is Jess's... Okay, next question. Is Jess's mother a teacher? No. Okay. You know, answer good. She's not a teacher. She's not. Okay, na. Okay, na yun. Uh, how many brother does Jezza got? One. Okay. One. Is Tristan older than Laura? Who's Laura? It's not mentioned. No. You answer that? It's not mentioned. Is it mentioned? No. Oh, you say you say you say that it's not mentioned in the story. No. It's Papa mentioned. Mentioned. M E N T I O T I O N E D. It is. It's not mentioned. Okay. Next. Number eight. Who gives great advice in the family? Um, grandfather. I think. Okay, okay. Grandfather. Number nine. What kind of a girl? Ah, sorry. Sige. Grandfather. F A T H E R. Number nine. What kind of a girl do you think is Jessa? Kind. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Older. Um. Mm. Okay. Wala naman sinabi kung kind siya. 
she is proud of her family, I think. Kasi yun yung paulit-ulit sinabi eh. Wala man sinabing kind siya, she's proud of her family. Oh, tama. Kasi yung question number 10, why do you think Jessa is proud of her family? Right? Number 10, why is she proud of her family? Um, I don't know. They are kind, good parents. Good because she have, she has a wonderful family. She has one. She has a wonderful family. Yeah. Saan nakuha yon? Dito uh, sa first part. Sige, tirahin ko. Tirahin kita paano mo. Wonderful family. One. Okay. Kasi, saan ko nakuha? Kasi lahat na dito naka-detail na. Naalala mo yung topic sentence, de ba? Um, eto kasi details na to, tapos eto yung closing niya. So, ito yung pinaka ano niya, I have a wonderful family whom I love very much. So, ba? Yun ay pinaka generic na part before niya i-mention isa-isa yung members ng family niya. Now, let's discuss this. Listen, Alex. Ano daw tong details? Okay, details. These are small pieces of information. Small details are small pieces of information that support the main idea. Di ba naalala mo yung supporting details? O, oh, yun. They tell something about people, events, things, time, objects, circumstances, situations, and manner. There are two types of details, implicit and explicit. Okay. So, ngayon, hinihimay na natin dati. Main topic, supporting details, tsaka concluding sentence lang. Ngayon, yung supporting details or yung details, meron ng dalawang klase. Implicit and explicit. Ano yung implicit? Details are used to describe or define a general state. These are the details that we can't really see. These are the these the are details that are implied but not easily expressed. Parang pahapyaw. Okay? Explicit. Yung, yung implicit, pahapyaw, hindi agad siya, hindi siya very gene, generic, general siya. Um, hindi siya, hindi siya nakatuon sa isang detalye yung informasyon. Kundi, pahapyaw lang siya, parang bahaging lang. While explicit details are the specific details that we can see and are measurable. These details are stated clearly. Now, noting details. Noting details is a reading comprehension skill that involves speaking out. Okay? It's a skill daw yan, yung noting details. Kakayahan yan. Speaking out from a piece of text information to achieve a given purpose. Given, halimbawa, itong isang buong impormasyon na to, ipipick up mo kung ano yung mga importanteng information. Okay? So, it's a skill. Pakataas ka na. Tinatamag ka. These details are the ones that good readers notice and authors use to emphasize the events, characters, and other details in text. So, ito na mga details na to na napipick up mo dito, eh, may purpose yung author or yung writer sa pagsulat niyan. At yan naman ay skill naman ng isang nagbabasa o nakikinig na mapick up yon, makuha yun kung ano yung importanteng details na yon. Okay, so discuss natin basic types of text. Ito na mo, dalawa. Dalawa nga lang ba? Let's see ha. Okay, so dalawa lang. Yung different types of text. Hindi yan yung text messaging or SMS ha, na sa cellphone, hindi yan ha. Yung sinasabing text dito is text to, eto, tong isang, dalawang klase niyan, okay? Nang nilalaman, okay? O, information, informational or factual text. Pakinggan mo kung ano to. It informs, instructs, or persuades reader by giving facts and information. Ano ra? nag inform nagbibigay ng informasyon. nag instruct So, in, nag inform nag, uh, yun nga, nag uh, ng informasyon. 
nag-instruct, uh, posibleng nag-uutos or nagbibigay ng panuto. E, or persuades reader by giving facts and information or nang hihikayat or meron siyang gustong ipa yun nga ipaunawa na ma, 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 mapasang-ayon niya doon sa gusto niya sabihin yung reader. Okay? Ang purpose nito is to describe a place or thing using facts. Pagsasabi ng mga uh, facts, mga katotohanan, mga informasyon. It retells, iniulit daw, nasabihin, yung events which may have already happened in time order. So, inuulit lang ni, uh, ano ba, nangyari na sa past, inuulit lang. Okay? It classifies, describes, and gives factual information about people, animals, things, and phenomena. It also gives instructions on how to make or do something. So, Um, mer tungkol pwedeng tungkol sa tao, sa hayop, sa mga bagay-bagay o sa mga uh, mga pangyayari, um, nagbibigay ito ng ng makatotohanan ng impormasyon. Okay? Merong merong basihan. Okay? Halimbawa, yung height and weight facts 'yun eh. I mean, o information 'yun eh, right? Or yung mga pangyayari in the past, yung sa history. So, ano 'yun? Facts 'yun. So, it also gives instructions on how to make or do something. So, yung kagaya ng pagsasaing, ng bigas, yan, instruction yun, di ba? Next, ano naman, yun yung informational or factual, ha? So, dun sa details, implicit, implied lang yun, yung pahapyaw. Explicit, direct na sinabi. Yung itong basic types of text naman, informational or factual, may basihan na katotohanan na talagang actual na nangyari. Saban so, lang yung isang type ng text is eto tingnan mo, literary text. It entertains or elicits an emotional response by using language to create mental images. So, eto yung halimbawa, um literary text um hindi siya hindi siya talaga based sa facts. Hindi talaga siya hinango sa talagang totoong pangyayari. Posibleng, posibleng gumawa ng pwede mong imaginein, like kwento. Ito, tungkol dito kay Jessa, um, posibleng hindi din naman to totoo, ba? Diba? So, pos posible din na another re uh, sample nito is yung, pag sabi mo mga literary, yung mga pwedeng katang isip yan, o, oh, tingnan natin. Literary text purpose are to describe people's characters, places, events, and things in an imaginative way. It retells events from saan? Saan galing? Ito kasi, yung informational or factual, saan galing yung, yung ano, it retells events which may have already happened in time order talagang nangyari, or posibleng nangyari. Ito, galing sa mga nobela, mga plays, stage plays, films, sa mga movies, And pwede rin personal experiences to entertain others. Okay? So, may purpose siya na mag-entertain. Okay. So, um, let's now discuss learning task 4. <coughs> Read this selection and note the details by answering the questions below. Write your answers on your net notebook. Nabubulot. Okay. Uwang and salagubang, you know, uwang. Yung black siya, black. Yung ganyan, itsura yan, ganyan, uwang. Ganyan nga ba? Or salagubang yan? Ay, hindi, salagubang yan. Pero para kasi silang magkamuka. Anyway, <laughs> sige. Magkamuka sila kasi si salagubang, um, parang greenish yung color. Si uwang is black. I think ganun na. Ah. Anyway, sige, let's read ah. Let's read muna. Uwang and Salagubang. Okay. Uwang, rhinoceros um, beetle in English, is one of the few beetles called by name in the Philippines. Can you read together with me, with your eyes? Pwedeng sabayan mo ko. Okay. Uwang, rhinoceros beetle in English, is one of the few beetles called by name in the Philippines. Other beetles are referred to as salagubang, the generic Tagalog word for beetle. 
Although we can see various pictures of rhinoceros beetle online, nothing can compare to seeing one up close and personal. From experience, I can tell you that if one gets on your clothing, it's really impossible to get it off easily. The variety found in the Philippines is the Asiatic Rhinoceros beetle. They, have, they may seem formidable and vicious, but appearance can be deceiving. They have sharp claws, and those claws can only hurt you if you get pinched by them. Other than that, they are practically harmless. They also have horns and are. And there is a difference in length depending on whether it's a male or female. From what I understand, it's the strongest insect in the world. I'm not willing to test the assertion. Okay. So, a question number one. What are the names of the two types of beetles which are found in the Philippines? Sige. Write it down. Number two, what variety of beetles do those types came from? Came from what variety of beetles? Beetles. Hindi, what variety of beetles nga? Rhinoceros beetle. Okay. Next, how did the author describe the claws of Uwang and Salagubang? Yung claws daw nito, ano daw? It's sharp. Sharp. Okay. Where is the sharp? It's just sharp. Yep. Okay, number four. Do you think you will be hurt once you see an uwang or salagubang? Depending. Depende? Paano depende? Sabi daw kasi dito, it can only hurt you if you get pinched by them. So, kailangan ka, ano kanila, yung cook, gano, kukrutin kanila. So, mangyayari lang yun pag pinakailaman mo sila, sinaktan mo siguro sila, di ba? Ayun, lalaban sila sa'yo. I never seen those. Oh, sige. So, ano ilalagay mo? Ano isasagot mo? Yes? No? No. Okay. What do you think is the purpose of the selection? Anong purpose ng selection? Tingnan mo nga. Ano na ba yung purpose? It's, is it to inform or to... Literally. Uh, or, or entertain? Literally. Na-entertain ka ba? Naaliw ka? Yeah. Naaliw ka? Kesa sa mas na in, natutu, natuto ka? Ano? Natuto po pala. Inform. Oh, sige. To inform. Kasi hindi ka naman niya pinatawa eh. O, oh, naaliw ka ba? Hindi yeah. mo siya nakakaaliw. Yeah. Diba? <laughs> Okay, next, <laughs> number five, learning task five. What do you usually, what do you usually imagine? So, ito mukhang literary to kasi imagine. Gets mo? Okay. Ganina, di ba? Inform. Natuto ka. Ito, para siyang may, may pinapa-imagine sa'yo sa story, masyadong mahaba. Pero okay lang. Ah, matatapos na agad pala tayo. So, that's good. I only have 30 minutes left. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do you usually imagine? Makinig. Have you ever experienced strange things in your classroom? Wow. Meron ba? None. None. Find out as you read the story, then answer the questions that follow. Write the answers in your notebook. Walking on the moon. Maglalakad sa buwan. Oh, sige. Makinig ka, ha? Makinig. When I was in grade 3, I got to take a trip to the moon. Wow. Wow. 
I remember the day like it was yesterday. I was one of the strange it was one of the strangest experiences I'd ever had. It all started when Miss Reyes, our grade 3 science teacher, was showing a video about the different planets in the solar system. Halfway through the video, I noticed a sparkling metal disc about the size of a peso, of a peso coin, lying on the floor. I kept trying to pay attention on the video but found myself bending over to pick up the shiny disc that was next to my desk. Now imagine mo. As soon as I touched the metal disc, something strange happened. I wasn't in the classroom anymore. Wow! May magic yung peso, yung peso coin, ano? I was hovering in the air. Oh. Way above, I was a little nervous, but also pretty excited. What was happening? How could I be floating? Oh. May na-imagine ka? Okay. It was then when I remembered the metal disc I picked, I picked, uh, I picked up from the floor earlier. Did it, did it I have something to do with the strange things that were happening to me right now? I opened my palm and looked closely at the disc. Uh, the, on the disc were these words. Hmm. Kasulat daw dun sa disc. Floating through the air like a helium-filled balloon, your travels will not stop and re until you reach the moon. Whoa! Yun ang nakalagay. Next. The next thing I knew, I was soaring through space, dodging satellites and asteroids. Oddly enough, I wasn't cold and I was able to breathe just fine. Before I knew it, I was standing on the moon. I was, um, it was amazing. It looked very different from the earth. No trees, water, nor houses. There weren't even any wind. For each step I took, I would bounce way up into the air. Ha! <laughs> Para siyang nagbabang yung bungee jump. <laughs> okay, asa na tayo? Every step took left a huge footprint in the dust. I had to be careful and make sure I didn't jump into a crater because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get out. Alam mo yung crater? Yung butas ng buwan, may butas daw kasi yun eh. So, iningatan niya huwag siyang mapapatungtong doon dahil baka makalusot na raw siya, doon din na siya makalaahon doon. Next, sometimes, I couldn't even see the bottom. I was bounding over to something in to, in the distance that that looks very out of the place. When I got there, I realized it was a flag. On the flag, there were words: "Go to go to Earth. You close your eyes and think of what you've learned. Oh, you will find in no time, in no time at all, you will be returned." Oh, pipikit lang pala siya. Ano pag pag-aralan niya lahat, uh, isip niya lahat ng napag-aralan niya. I wasn't sure I wanted to go back just yet, but I knew it might get dark soon and I didn't want to be on the moon by myself in the dark. I decided to close my eyes and think of the weather and other characteristics of the moon I've learned that day. When I opened my eyes, I was sitting on my seat in my science classroom. Miss Reyes was turning on the lights because the video was over. I sat there wondering about what just happened. I opened my hand to look at the metal disc, but it was gone. Did it really take a trip to the moon or was it just a dream? Oh, di ba? Okay. Ito na. Where is the setting of the story? Saturn, outer space, town, science classroom. Science classroom. Okay. Okay. In the sentence, I was hovering in the air, way above the school. What does the word hovering mean? Floating, dreaming, walking, jumping. Floating. Huh? Floating. Floating. Hovering. 
ko. Kaya hindi ko po alam yung sabihin ng hovering. Dun sa sentence, right? Hovering in the air. Alam naman, dreaming in the air, walking in the air, jumping in the air. <laughs> okay. Next. Why are the words, ito ha? Why are the words floating through the air like a helium-filled balloon, your travels will not stop until you reach the moon, written in italics. Why? The teacher thinks they are important. They are words, the student says. They are words from the video. The words on the disc are important. The words on the disc are important. Or it's from the video. Nasaan siya? Nakasaan ba nakasulat yan? Sa disc? Sige. The words on the disc are important. Tingnan natin kaya yung key to correction, no? Kung tama. Number three. Kung may, kung tama yung key to correction. <laughs> Baliktad po. Oo oh, nga eh. Answer key. Gulo. Answer key na mali, mali po. Hindi po. Ano, lesson three na tayo, di ba? Ay, lesson three. L lesson, tama, week three. Five. Learning task 5. Uh, number 3. Letter D. Oh, tama. May tama. May tama. Okay. Next. Hindi naman perfect si Coach Mom A. <laughs> we have to double check if they're not sure. Okay. In which sentence, In which sentence does the word bound have the same meaning as the sentence I was bounding over to something in the distance? The sticks were bound in a bundle. The rabbit will bound through the field. My book was bound at the printers. There is a bound to be to be a change of plans. Hmm? Ano yung meaning ng bound? Hindi. Ha? Hindi ko po alam yung bound. Hindi, eh, sabi dito kasi, uh, dito, I was bounding over to something in a distance. Bound to. Bound, bounding over. Um, bound. <laughs> the bus is bound to, um, Manila. Ayan. Parang ganun yung karang. Drive. Hmm? Drive. Hindi, Drive. parang going. Going. Uh, so, anong meaning ng bound dito? Kasi, dami meaning ng bound eh. Yung sticks were bound in a bond, bundle, nakabound siyang ganun in a bundle, yung sticks. The rabbit will bound through the field. Parang mali yung spelling ng field. <laughs> Parang field dapat to. F-I-E-L-D. <laughs> Napuno daw yung rabbit. Okay. My book was bound at the printer. So, ito yun naman yung book binding. Nagpa-book na, bind siya. So, bound na bound yung book niya. So, there is a bound to be a change of plan. I don't understand letter D. I don't understand the same things. Maybe B? Yeah, Maybe I think B? yung B kasi yung rabbit pupunta sa field. <laughs> Hi. Okay, number five. Why does the main character not know if the trip really happened? Bakit hindi niya raw alam? Because um, it's sige, the last the dream. Tingnan natin. The main character was sitting in a desk when the video ended. The metal disc was gone and the main character did not have any proof. The main character had difficulty remembering the order of events. The solar system video is still being shown. Uh, ano nangyari? Um, Alin doon? Na wala pa yung disc. Letter B. Siguro maninilip tayo ulit sa kit key answers kasi um yun sa'yo letter B ha oh tama letter B nga and the answer for number 4 is also letter B okay which event happened first in the story okay for ito trip to the moon the main character is hovering above the town the main character reads the word on the disc the main character picks up a sparkling metal disc. Yeah. Or the main character is sitting at a desk. Balikan natin yung story. Alin ang nauna? Mm 
parang alin ang nauna? Yung may sparkly golden thingy. Ha? Sparkly golden thingy. Hindi, hindi. Wala, wala din siya sabi mo. Uh, hovering above the town, reads the word on the disc, picks up a sparkling metal yep. disc, or sitting Thank at the desk. Letter C. Parang hindi pa. Bago siya mag ano, nag-aaral muna siya eh. Nagsisit muna siya sa desk. Tingnan natin na. Ako tingin ko letter D. O, tama. Letter D. Kaupo muna siya. Next, what would be another title for the story? The Great Class Field Trip. The Living Moon. The Magic Metal Disc. The Solar System. The Magic Metal Disc. Okay. Okay, very good. C Yay. Yes, C. Now, we're almost done. So, um, the last lesson for English for week three. I thought, uh, okay, so late, next week will be weeks four and five. Okay, details. Ito na, details ha, pakinggan mo. Details are small pieces of information that support the main idea. Alam mo na to, diba? Diba? Details, they support the main idea. These are little information. Small pieces. Okay. They can either be implicit or explicit. Alam mo na yung implicit, pahapyaw, explicit, direct. Diba? Direct na, direct na details. One of the important skills needed in understanding details is known as noting details. Okay? Noting details is a reading comprehension skill that involves picking out from a piece of text, information to achieve a given purpose. Okay, malinaw yan? Text information may be taken from either informational, factual, and literary text. Re Learning task 6. Read and answer the questions below. Write your answers in your notebook. Why does ocean have waves? Wow! Waves? Bakit daw may waves ang ocean? Makinig ka, para malaman mo, ha? The ocean is never still. Hindi daw to payapa. Huh? We, hindi payapa ang ocean. Ma, magalaw. Ma wave. Whether observing from the beach or a boat, we hindi expect to see waves on the horizon. Ha? Huh? Hindi pa po ako naaano sa boat. Hindi ka pa na... Oh, sige, sasakay tayo sa boat. Waves are created by energy. Pakingga mo na, bakit nagkaroon ng waves? Waves are created by energy passing through the water. Causing it to move. So, may energy na dumadaan dun sa water. Nag causing it to move in circular motion. Paikot pala. Okay. However, however, water does not actually travel in waves. Oh. Waves transmit energy, not water. Across the ocean, and if not obstructed by anything, they have the potential to travel across an entire ocean basin. So, ano yan, parang yung may planggana ka, tapos may tubig, pag ganun siya, o. Oh, pag ganun, yung, yung pag ginanun mo yung tubig sa planggana, iniikot mo, yung, i, i, dito, tali ba ito, yung planggana, tapos may tubig sa loob, iniikot mo siya, makikita mo gumaganon yung tubig, di ba, gumaganon. Gets? So, parang ganun. Okay. Waves... Makikita mo gumagalaw yung tubig. Na imagine mo, gumagalaw yung tubig mo ako push. Oh, di ba? Oh, waves are most commonly caused by wind. Oh, wind. Mm. Oh, wind-driven waves or surface waves created by the friction between wind and surface water. water. As wind blows across the surface of the ocean or a lake, the continual disturbance creates a wave crest. These types of waves are found globally across the open ocean and along the coast. Ah, kaya gumaganon siya. Oh, gumaganon yung wave, di ba? Yung maganon, oh, shoot. Nabasa na po ng wave. Ayun. Gumaganon yung wave. Nabasa na po ng wave. Next. More potentially, hazardous waves can be caused by severe weather. Eto na yun, yung pangit na panahon, pangit na panahon, bagyo. Like hurricane. The strong winds and pressure from this type of severe storm causes storm surge, a series of long waves that are created far from shore in deep water dun sa gitna and gitna intensify mm -mm, as they move closer to land. So, galing siya sa gitna ng dagat, pag ganun siya, oh, nagro-roll siya, 
okay? So, sabi na storm surge, malaki pa kesa sa bahay, minsan malaki pa kesa sa mga building. Okay. Other hazardous waves can be caused by underwater disturbances that displace large amounts of water quickly, such as earthquakes. So, kita mo kapag may earthquakes, gumalaw yung lupa, syempre may may lupa naman sa ilalim ng dagat, di ba, ng tubig. So, yun, magugulo din yun. So, kung malakas yung earthquake, so, magkakos din siya ng uh, disturbances. Ano pa? Earthquakes, landslides, or volcanic eruptions. These very long waves are called tsunamis. Ito na yung maraming pinapatay na tao. Kasi, malalaki pa talaga to sa buildings. Okay? Storm surge and tsunamis are not the type of waves you imagine crashing down on the shore. These waves roll upon the shore like a massive sea level rise and can reach far distances inland. Mommy, di ba po may moving gano'n? Mm. The gravitational pull of the sun and moon to the earth also causes waves. These waves are tides or, in other words, tidal waves. It is a common misconception that, misconception that a tidal wave is also a tsunami. The cause of tsunamis are not related to the tide information at all, but can occur in any tidal state. Okay, what creates waves? First question, what creates waves? Um, wind. Wind, okay. Okay. What could be an obstruction to waves? Ano ro yung pwedeng obstruction sa waves? Yung makakahad lang. Landslide. Hindi, hindi. Obstruction. Makakahad lang. Um, yung ano. Ano pong nakakahad lang? Hmm. Ano nga ba pwedeng maging obstruction? Nang so, ano yung pwedeng makahad lang sa waves? Earthquake? No, nope. yan din yung pwedeng maging causes kasi ng storm. Um, no, nope. nakaka-create din ng waves ang storm. So, sabi kasi dito, dito sa ano, Sharp? waves transmit energy, not water, across the ocean, and if not obstructed by anything. So, anything can obstruct a wave. Any, anything, uh, based doon sa story, anything. So, anong anything, anything yung pwedeng mag-obstruct sa wave? So, kung maliit lang yung wave, pwede siyang ma-obstruct ng mga ship, mga barko, na malalaki sa kanya. Diba? Or mga malaking rocks, na pwede niyang tamaan. Diba? Pag ang wave tumama sa rock, nabe-break siya, diba? At nakikita natin, kaya may tinatawag na breakwater. ba? Diba? Doon, yun siya, mabibreak niya yun. It can obstruct the wave. ba? Diba? So, ano nilagay mo? Anything like, sinat mo lang, anything like, um, rock, rocks, breakwater. Pwede na yun. Yun yung pinakamagandang example ng pambreak ng wave, breakwater. Rocks. Or, Break, break water. What is break water? Yung sa seawall, pag um, nagpunta ka limbawa sa saan ba to? Sa PN, sa Cavite City, or sa, yung merong sa likod ng, ng checkpoint sa Cavite, sa may checkpoint sa Cavite City, sa may likod ng ospital, meron doon malalaking bato, or tsaka merong seawall na nakaharang na ganun. Pa, para hindi pag pumasok yung alon, para pag tumama yung alon, ma mabe-break mo yung alon, hindi niya sisirain, iwa-wash away yung yung lupa or hindi siya papasok dire-diretso doon sa city. Pag ganun po, baby. Oo, dito ate yung very break breakwater and dito yung wave. Tatama siyang ganun. Mabe-break na siya, babalik na siya sa ocean. Ganun. Parang sa Manila Bay, may breakwater ba sa Manila Bay? Nah, hindi ako sure eh. Ano nang pupunta ng Manila Bay? Anyway, <laughs> Or okay. ano po, or... Breakwater, B-R-E-A-K, water, breakwater. Water. Okay, number three. Number three. Why do you think the wind is the most common cause of wave creation? Um, it's just a common 
Why is it the most common cause of wave creation? Because it ito oh, created by the friction between wind and surface water. Ito to, as wind blows across the surface of the ocean or lake. It's uh it it the it it creates a wave crest. It mm -hmm. it creates a wave crest. Oh, ito na yung favorite mong tanong. Ah, uh, wave press. Wave press. Aral ka ng spelling, ha? Special class natin. Mommy's not also good in spelling, eh. Anyway, what are some causes of hazardous waves? Ayan, hazardous waves daw. Hazardous waves. Wind? Hindi, uh, hindi wind. Hindi, they are called, eh, hey, tsunami, mamaya pa yun eh, mamaya pa yun sagot. Ito yun, no? Ah, uh, la, 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 la. Storm? Hindi, hazardous waves. Ito yun din, in-enumerate in natin kanina. Ito, ito. Underwater, underwater di disturbances. Such as earthquakes, landslides, or volcanic eruptions. Yung tatlo. Uy, dahil dito ka lang. <laughs> Numaktaw ka. Sayang yung papel. Yes. What's up? Earthquakes na lang. Landslides or volcanic eruptions. Yung tatlo lang. Sige, lagay mo na, na rin. Underwater disturbances. Uy, tinabig mo yung ano, maduduling ating viewers. Underwater disturbances. Tapos dash. Dash eh. Ayun na, earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions. Mamaya mo na lang sulat. Sagutin mo na yung number 5. Alam mo na yung sagot eh. Mamaya mo na lang. Earth. Sunod mo na lang dito later. Tapos sulat mo na dito yung number 5. Okay. Ah, uh, what is another name for long, very long wave? Oh, ayan na yung very long wave. Tsunami! Oh, sige, you write it down. Tsunamis. Okay. While so, Alex is writing, thank you so much for watching our week 3. You continue writing. <laughs> thank you so much, um, dear Coach Mom A viewers, for watching our week 3 for English 4. Um, don't forget to subscribe to Coach Mom A and click the bell so that you'll get notified when we go online or when we post new updates. Um, happy learning, guys! And uh, hoping na lahat po tayo ay natuto. Thank you so much. God bless you.